Today, going to be talking about final expense appointments, um, how to properly uh, close, protect your clients, and why the final expense market is such a huge market for us to tap into and to serve. So, first out, we got to understand the psychology of the final expense client. This is someone who has thought about what happens when they pass away, how their spouse kids, loved ones are going to afford to pay for the burial, the funeral, and um, ultimately the loss of the income that the family potentially uh, is going to have um, based on if that person is working or social security or, or what have you. So to me, when you're meeting with these clients, you need to understand that because in your positioning to them, they already number one, like all the leads we have, people know, you know why you're there uh, because obviously they have the need. But it, specifically in final expense, we need to hone in on death in this regard in the financial burden that is left. And I think you need to understand in your appointment, you always need to be going back to that and bringing the clients to that. And I think the best way to close on these appointments is by not only you bringing it to it, their attention um, by telling them, but you're actually having them tell you, meaning you're a great question asker about what life looks like when someone passes away. So let's assume we're meeting a husband and a wife. Okay, so now they filled out something, they filled out a form, they filled out something online, whatever the lead might be. You're either meeting with them or the virtual game, whether it be a one call close or you know Zoom or you know any type of telesale. Um, in the beginning of your appointment, one of the key things that I'd like to say after I let them know who I am and what I do, and I also let them know that I do other things as well, um, mortgage protection, you know, annuity stuff like that. I then like to ask a probing question and it would be, I assume Bob and Mary that I'm here because we want to make sure when one of you passes away, the financial burden is given to the insurance carrier and not to each other. Is that correct? So something along those lines, because right off the bat, you already have a trial close. Cause then what they're going to tell you is most people are going to say, yep, Yes, Steve, that's why, you know, and you'll get the, you know, the crazy, like, I just want a price or I just want a quote, or I just want to shop around. You'll get some of that too, which is all good, but you've now teed them up as to why you're here. So then I've talked a lot about in, in a lot of trainings about the simplicity element of what we do, right? And you want to keep for the final expense market, that older market, you know, 50 to 85, you want to keep things very simple because probably the two biggest reasons that people don't get final expense insurance is because one, they think that the process is going to be very cumbersome. They're going to need to do a medical blood and urine and two, that they can't afford it. Right. So a lot of people, most of America we know is on a fixed income. I mean, and we all are on a fixed income at the end of the day, you know, our income, you know, is what it is for the most part. So those are the two biggest things that I think as objections, if you mention them right off the, off the bat, after the probing question, now you're taking the guard down, right? You're putting them at ease. So if you let them know the goal here, Bob and Mary is me, the broker that works with multiple insurance carriers. One, we're going to have an option for you. Two, we're going to have something that's going to be affordable and fit your budget. So now I just tore down the wall of, can I afford it or can I not afford it? Okay. And you're also more of the helper and the server than you are the salesperson. And this market hates salespeople. They don't want to be sold. They want to be, um, they want to be, you know, kind of working with you in a sense, you know, and not the sales guy. And you want that obviously as well. So now we, we've kind of gotten through that. So the next part of it, keeping it simple is obviously health. So I let people know, you know, very simple insurance companies approve you based on health. So what we're going to do is go through some basic health questions. Again, you're not going to have to do a medical. Uh, we're going to go through some health questions. We're going to go through some medication, see what you have there. 
I'm going to pick the best carrier for your conditions. And then we're going to customize a plan again, that fits your budget. Does that sound fair? Again, another trial close. So then I just jump into health, right? Ever anything major, heart, stroke, cancer. And, you know, people will, you know, they'll go pick up their, go get their medications. And, and it's cool because when you ask those questions that way, people already know because a lot of them might have been through this already. They'll go get their stuff and they start just like opening up to you, right? Because you've tore down those walls and you've actually built up some walls for yourself of trust. So now they start like getting all their stuff out, telling you everything. Um, you do have the crowd that tries to hide a little bit of stuff. You want to definitely kind of massage into what they have. And you're always bringing it back to, um, you're telling me what you have so I can do the best job for you to make sure that we get you something that's going to make sense for you. So now I go into that. From there, I'm going to then start talking about um, again, the financial burden, the beneficiary, if it's Bob and Mary, husband, wife. Um, and I'm going to get to kind of the education that I'm looking to get to people who may or may not some of the, know some of the facts that will actually help them in this scenario. So I'll then ask about other insurances. Hey, you know, what do you have currently? You have a term. Do you have another hole? Um, and this is where you find um, issues with the policies that they have, right? Um, somebody has a term, what's the issue that the term's running out and it's not a final expense insurance. If somebody has a whole or, or even a current final expense, it might be something that's a graded two year wait. It might be something they got over the phone or the mail and they didn't realize it was a graded two year wait and they're, and they're healthy enough for level coverage. So now when you start pulling that stuff out, you look credible and you're also putting them in the best position. I literally had last night someone who had gotten a policy over the phone, had a two year wait and was healthy enough for day one coverage that was actually cheaper and applied and got her day one coverage. But I wouldn't have gotten that if I wouldn't have asked those questions and kind of pulled out the other policy. So those things are gold and you have to massage it sometimes because not everybody wants to pull out their policies, but you always go back to why you need them the goal is to put you in the best position possible and tell them, look, if you have a great policy already, cool, we'll leave it alone. Maybe we add to it, maybe we don't, but let's see. I'm here, I'm an expert, I do this all day long, let me try and help you. So now you figure out the other insurances, figuring out um, when you're uh, finding out their other monies, hey, do you have anything that acts um, like life insurance? Um, so you're finding your 401ks, your IRAs, your money you could roll over for annuities. So you're always looking for that. Um, and you're making your appointment more three-dimensional than black and white, right? Without being confusing. So then budget, that's my next thing. So obviously Bob and Mary, we're all on a budget. Like I said earlier, I want to find what's going to fix your but fit in your budget what's going to make the best sense because the only way that this insurance matters is if you have it the day that you die. Only way it matters. The rest of the time is irrelevant. It has to pay when you die. So we need to be able to afford it. So I'm going to go into, okay, what's your, if it's mortgage, if it's rent, I'm going to go into that first. What is that? I'm jotting that down. Then I'm going to go into their income. You know, if it's, you know, one, the other, whatever, whatever it is, say it's husband and wife and um, they have their income. Let's say it's, just social security. First thing I want to educate on is when one spouse passes, you're going to keep the higher of the two social securities and you're going to lose the lower. So once I know what the lower is, I'm writing it down and like circling it. And I'm always going to go back to that because that's my ammo because that's the loss. People operate off of loss, not off of gain specifically in the final expense market because they know what they're losing. So now I know what they pay. Let's say they have a mortgage and I can now start talking about some mortgage protection as well, which can make the final expense premium higher. So I can show some higher premium and also obviously just covering the final expenses, but I'm giving myself some options in the way of the things that I'm showing because I'm asking more questions. Okay. So now going through that, um, that income, and I'm talking about, okay, when Bob passes, Mary, you're going to lose $1,000 a month. 
and you're going to be in a negative. Would you agree that when we lose that social security, you're going to be in a negative of income? And then I'll ask the question flat out. What are you going to do? What's your plan? And then you're quiet. And that's where the, you know, a silent trial close, we'll call it, um, where, you know, again, you're just cementing the fact of why you're there, the fact of why we're doing what we're doing. Um, and you're bringing everything to light and to the forefront for them. So now they go through that. Then when it comes to options, okay, three options tops. So take your blank piece of paper. I would show, let's say, and I'll ask, you know, you're looking to be buried or cremated. Okay. I'm looking to be buried. Typically people do 10 to 15 on burial. Typically people do seven to nine or 10 on cremation. And then I'll always show, let's say it's a max option, you know, 30,000 Eagle Premier, whatever it might be. So I'm showing three options. And then in the options, I want to show the value, right? So if I'm, if I'm most final expenses that we work with, they have very similar benefits. So let's say we're using Eagle Premier, for instance, we have a level premium and I'll educate on the difference between level and a company that might start you lower, but it'll go up in price. Okay. Very important. Talking cash value, because now you have a policy that will accumulate money every month. I'll do a little education around, you know, kind of the whole final expense versus what a term does. Right. So I'll do the little of that, you know, pays double on an accidental death. It pays triple on travel. I'm writing all that out on the paper. And then I'll talk about um, the paid up component of a whole life where you'll get to a certain point. Hopefully you live a long time. You're healthy. You'll pay up the insurance where you get to a point where you stop paying the premium. So now instead of me just throwing 50, 75 and a hundred dollars on the table, I've just shown you a, uh, a smorgasbord of, of value because it's more than just doing this. It's doing all of these other things. And then I'll also throw in there on an Eagle Premier, a terminal illness rider. Hey, if you get a terminal illness, you can take 50% of the money, God forbid you needed it, to use medical bills, paying anything, whatever it might be. So it's kind of like a rainy day fund as well. Um, and it accumulates, again, that cash day one. So you're showing that value. And then it's, I'm going to run the application. We're going to run your health number one. And while I do that, which of the three options fits your budget best and then bow out and don't say a word, whoever talks first loses and they're going to kick it around. And then let's say they pick one. I'll always go back into the budget and say, okay, so you think the hundred dollar option would work for you. And based on the, um, the budget we went over here, that looks like it'll fit. Or sometimes people shoot a little too high and I'll actually say to them, Hey, I don't know. Do you think that's going to be comfortable? Because I'd rather see you start low because we can always add later, but I'd rather see you get the approval because the most important part is the approval in the health. And that's another big thing you need to stress. This isn't buying a car. Um, not everybody can get it, but I'd rather see you start with something, get approved because we never know. We're never promised tomorrow. We don't know what our health is going to do. So then they kind of, you know, tell you what they're going to do. You run the app, you, you know, fill out the app, doing all the health questions. And throughout your app, you're also creating doubt and you have to create doubt. Do not look at things as layups ever create doubt. If they take whatever metformin for diabetes, Say, I work with all these companies. I think this company is going to take you on metformin. We're not 100% sure. We're going to run it. We're going to see. And then cross our fingers and pray. Hopefully, we can get you approved. Creating doubt. People want what they can't have, especially in the final expense market. So this way, at the end, when you get an approval, whether you tell them, you know, you tell them right then and there, whatever you do, um, there can be some like joy. There can be some elation. There can be some appreciation for you and what you did to get them approved because not everybody gets approved. And honestly, something I like to do throughout that process is I like to talk about clients that were, weren't as fortunate to get this day one coverage 
because of certain health conditions, because again, it makes them want it more. So you're always going back to that. You're always going back to loss. You're always going back to loss of income and you're always keeping it in the budget. And what's awesome about this market is there's so many leads for final expense <clears throat> and you can literally, you can pack your day. You people are home during the day, whether you're doing in person or doing over the phone or zoom, you can pack your day. You can get these appointments done in 20, 30 minutes. You can find annuity money. You can find mortgage protection. You can find referrals. You can, you can get them child whole life for their kids and grandkids. You can find Medicare. There's so many great avenues off of a final expense lead. It's insane. You can, you can build a massive business and a massive agency because if you look at the statistics of the U S um, the amount of seniors that are out there, it, it, it's insane. Um, and they're, they're underserved, you know, we, we, we serve an underserved community. So I hope this helps, you know, keeping it really crazy, simple, um, being their friend, being their friend on the inside, giving them some knowledge. Cause you know, one of the biggest things that I find, you know, in insurance in general is the education side, right? Like you don't have to have a, you know, PhD in what we do, but if you can educate yourself a little bit on some of the little nuance, and then you can bring that to your client, you show a lot of credibility and guess what? You're going to win in the credibility over the mailer that they got from, you know, insurance company X that's just saying, Hey, here's your chart on insurance. Cause now you're their guy or girl. So hope this helps everybody um, tap into the market, serve these people. They need us. And 